Hey, Miss Moore. Good evening, everyone. I can't hear you, Ms. Boyd. <laughs> um, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mute it back. Unmute yourself. Hold on. Hold on. Unmute. Unmute yourself. Okay. Now you can hear me, right? Yeah. So you were I'm, talking that whole time? I'm to, no, I'm talking on the phone. Oh, I thought you were you were speaking and I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. No, I'm <laughs> talking on the phone. I'm going to go back to talking on my phone. <laughs> oh, just, uh, okay, got you. I don't hear anything, Paris. So everything is muted because it's unique. That's the rule. No. Oh, you mean that you think that they they did that so we can't hear anything? Yes. All participants are muted when they come into the space. Hey, Pat, it's Warren. How are you?
Um, good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to wait for about another five minutes for people to come on. Um, please, everyone, please mute your backgrounds. I guess we can start. Nolan, you're with me? Yes, I'm here. Okay, what time do you have? 7.04. Okay, we'll give one more minute. Somebody needs to mute their background. I keep hearing these like in the background. Somebody's parking and they're getting too close. <laughs> okay. Let me know when it's 705. Uh, I have 705 here. Okay, so we can start now. Again, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We have a a lot on the agenda today. Um, the rules of, of, of order, uh, you know, as as we speak, like one at a time, um, and everybody will get the opportunity to express um, how they feel or what they're thinking or for or against. And I want to welcome... Um, all of my um, guests and my um, committee members. So we're gonna start with those that don't have the agenda. I'll just start off with old business. We're gonna do a follow up of court day that was supposed to happen on 2321 for 40 and 54 Crown Street. Okay, Alicia. Um, the, we were supposed to be discussing the sanctions motion. Evelyn, Evelyn, you might want to turn off your mute. Evelyn Collier, 
Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we were talking about, um, we had a, a date to go back to court on the sanctions motion and the uh, contempt of court. Um, but something happened in the court where our judges got changed and then our judges got changed back. So it was a lot of confusion. It wind up just being a holding date. Uh, so there was no hearing and we didn't go. So we're still waiting for those decisions. Um, the other case- well, Hold on, do you have a new court date though? No, no. I think that right now it's just submitted, the, submitted on whatever. They're going to be making the decisions on the paperwork. I don't think there will be another hearing for that. I think the only, the next time we'll probably be having a hearing will be in front of the second department because I think the case is probably now completely finished. I believe so. If something else changed, I'll let you guys know. But for now, the case is finished. Okay. So we are finally finished with that case. The new case, we will be going back on the 23rd of February to talk about the new case. And um, we still have some outstanding requests that we gave to the Department of City Planning, including the declaration page that we are expecting to get, as well as other pieces of information. But that case will not be up until the 23rd. Okay, so when you say the new case, that's with 40 and 54 crown? No, that's for the 960. That's uh -huh. the case that we filed the lawsuit, got the temporary restraining order. And as a result, we were able to win uh, the fact that adverse effects will happen to the garden because before that case was filed, the city was saying that no adverse effects will happen to the garden. But once we filed the lawsuit and the, we believed that the lawyers took a look at the Department of City Planning papers and said, no guys, you're going to have to say the adverse effects will happen. And as a result, they did. So we won that concession for the community. So now, um, but we're still going back to the court because there's still um, documents that we're requesting that has not been given to us, as well as the issue of, of in enforcing um, the new charter revision where they have to provide information to the community 30 days before um, a project is certified. But this, the project was, as everyone knows, was certified last week. Great, thanks. Um, uh, let's see, bill number 2186. Um, that was supposed to be done by Professor Angadi, but I think he, I think uh, Nicholas said that he will not be able to attend until later on. So if you can move him back down the- We can, but ask him. Esteban, did you, did, I thought he went to listen to something also around 2186. Uh, no, they haven't had a hearing on it. Um, like they, uh, it's been working its way through committee, well, through several committees. Um, but I think it's only now gotten to the point where, where there's gonna be like uh, public hearings on it. So um, I don't know if anybody has the schedule for that. I can look it up. Uh, could somebody type the bill number in the chat for me? Um, 2186. 2186. All right, thank you. Got it. Professor Angadi should be here about 7:45, I believe, to do his presentation. Okay, so we'll okay, we'll we'll pull that off. Thank so you. We can go right into um, new business then. Um, so, uh, 960 Franklin Avenue um, rezoning certification update. Okay, so. 960 was certified on February the 1st. And so the start date is 10 days after, after they are certified, which would be February 11th, 2021. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's it. Now, one of the, one of the uh, what I wanted to bring forward to the committee is that, um, I think a presentation should be done as opposed, I mean, and in conjunction with a public hearing. And the reason the presentation should be done is so that we can hear and be able to answer, ask questions. Because at the public hearing, you know, you can only 
come up and say you're for or against, the for or against, you got a minute or two. But at least I, if we can do a presentation, you know, we can get some of the questions answered. Now, again, this is to the committee. I would like to do a presentation on February the 24th. I haven't gotten permission yet, but I have, I will follow up if you, if you're okay with that. And, and I would like to have the public hearing on March the 18th. Again, all of this, I haven't gotten a yay or a nay, but this is what I'm, I'm trying to plan ahead. And then have the full board vote on March the 23rd. Because I think we only have up until April to get all of this together. Because when we do the public hearing, there's a lot that we have to do prior to that. You know, we have to make sure all the information is out to the public. We have to post it in, in the newspaper. So there's a number of things that we definitely have to do. And anyone have anything on the committee? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. This is I, this is Nicola. I have a, a oh, couple Nicola. questions. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, have we received all of the documents now that it's certified? I think they have five days to send the complete package to us. I know we saw some. I saw a posting on. I think it was the second that gave access to that um, a share drive. Is That's that share drive supposed to be complete? because I noticed that um, at least one document is missing from it, which is a key document. The restrictive declaration document wasn't there. And I think that's the one, that's the main document that they are legally bound to adhere to, no matter what's in the application, et cetera, they have to abide by what's in that restrictive document. And the draft versions we saw were, you know, half, half blank. So, that's a document I think we need, and I didn't see it in the packet. Hey, Nicola, it's it's Mia. Nicola, it's Mia. Um, that was the latest um, link that we received to DCP, um, advising that that was that those were the final docs. But I will circle back uh, to DCP and note um, the missing document and request it and forward it to committee once okay. I receive it. Great. And then the, the second item I have is a broader question, and it really ties back to um, the fact that we are in this COVID situation and we are, you know, having to rely on Zoom meetings and technology to perform, conduct these hearings. Um, the concern I've heard in other communities, and I definitely know that it's a concern for our community, is that we have a large number of constituents that don't have ready access to the technology required. Even in my block association, many of my seniors, you know, don't know how to use Zoom, aren't, aren't familiar, are afraid of it. They don't even wanna dial in. And I know that they will have um, questions and concerns. I mean, this is a significant change in our community. And so I think we need to push back on, on city council or, or DCP to provide, what are they gonna to do to make sure that our community across the board has the access that they would need to actively participate in this type of a hearing? Uh, I don't have the answer to that, but I, I, right. I, I think we need to push back and ask for that. Like, what do they plan on doing? Because if they're pushing this through, knowing that we cannot have face-to-face -face meetings right now, how they're disenfranchising a large number of our population and the people that need the affordable housing are at risk of being displaced with this kind of large scale development. And we wanna make sure that their voices can be heard, right? Um, Fred, do you have an answer for that? Fred? Uh, I don't know if I have an answer, but I definitely want to give a couple of comments uh, with regards to some of these uh, super questions. Uh, well, first of all, I, I want to apologize in advance. I probably will not be able to stay on to the entirety of the meeting, uh, but I do want to thank the chair for giving me a couple of minutes to address the committee and the community. Um, so definitely to the question with regards to that, I think that's something that's come up in other committees as well with regards to, to access, how we're going to be able to do that. So uh, I've had a couple of conversations with some of the chairs, including uh, Ms. Moses for ULERP, 
part of what I'm trying to do is uh, have a, a meeting with the chairs in terms of uh, for ULERP, along with uh, environmental protection, along with parks, recreation, uh, along with housing, in terms of, I think there are a number of points that we want to make sure we're touching on. So the purpose of our meeting is going to be with regards to coordination and communications, uh, as well as figuring out some of the logistics in terms of what else needs to be done. So definitely with regards to if there are still documents that are missing, I'm asking for all the committees to identify those. So that way we can be, uh, you know, we can get on top of those to make any requests that we need to in terms of the documents, uh, information that the committees want to need. Um, Yula Pierre has already, uh, you know, signaled that she is definitely looking towards um, having a, a presentation from the applicants themselves, uh, which I think is going to be critical because they need to come and speak themselves in terms of what they're proposing. And if there are any questions, you know, in terms of giving us the information that we're going to need. From there, we can also have that additional follow-up in terms of this, this gaps in the information that we need to make those decisions. Uh, with regards to the outreach, uh, absolutely, I think that we do share that concern in terms of definitely because we're working in a COVID environment. Uh, normally, it would have been a matter we would have just gotten the auditorium or we would have gotten a, a, a significant space in terms of being able to make sure that there was room for everyone. Uh, we're going to have to examine that in terms of how, what tools we have our, at our disposal. Uh, I'll say up front, I'm loathe to say, let's get everybody into an auditorium, especially given the, the current state of the pandemic. Uh, I don't think we're quite there yet, but we do want to discuss what options are, what do we have as a community, and as well in terms of if there's any assistance that we can be uh, given by the city or any of the, you know, any other relevant agencies as well. So like, there are still some pieces that we're definitely working me, on. Right, like to me, can't we push back? I mean, they're forcing this on us. They know the situation that we're dealing with right now. And if they want these virtual meetings to take place, they need to create a scenario, come up with solutions so that everyone can be represented. That's why we have other communities that have filed lawsuits against them for this, because they know that people are not being represented, are at risk of not being represented correctly. And so to me, DCP needs to take the responsibility. They are the ones setting up this timeline. They're forcing this on us. They need to figure out how they, how is this virtual meeting going to work? Right, and it's a concern that we, we have limited resources, so back. we can't be on to CB9. Right, and, and that's the thing. So, I mean, we need to discuss I'm, I'm, you know, the scope of what we're trying to do. Camera. No, it's okay. Yeah. I know what you look like. <laughs> Can I make a comment <laughs> no, on the- But absolutely, though. Get my camera to work today. <laughs> Can make a comment on the, the issue of the presentations and the, the public hearing. Um, so I don't know if, it, if everybody had a chance to watch the, uh, the certification meeting. Um, uh, you should go online and, and do so. It was, I'd, I'd never heard anybody, I'd never heard anyone on, on the City Planning Commission talk yeah. the way that they talked. Um, it was stunning. They were basically like, uh, we can't believe this is even happening, but okay, let's certify it. Like it was, it was crazy. Um, they, the, they made it clear that they did not agree with with what was going on. They did not support the project, and uh, that now it was the developers. Uh, developers, uh, you know, it was their their prerogative to see how they were going to try to sell it to the community. Uh, but they were clearly not on board, and that's very weird. Um, but all that said, I think that we've we've made tremendous efforts over the past two years to try to get this developer to the table. And if we're going to allow them the opportunity to present. Um, a, I think that we need to be very clear about um, about participation and how community member, members will be able to participate. I also think um, that if you're going to have a you know a, a 10, 10 to fifteen minute uh, you know essentially like propaganda for this development, that uh, there should be an equal amount of time given to the folks in the community that are opposing this because they will most certainly have uh, prepared. Uh, a counterpoint to that, and I think that the community should have the entire uh, the entire picture of what's going on. Um, so, like I would I would say, if we're if we are going to give them time that, and remember that we only get a small number of these hearings, um, they do go on the public record, they do come up later in court cases. The things that you say actually do matter. So, if we are going to be giving them, uh, you know, however much time we're giving them, then we, you know, basically I don't think that like uh, that MTOP should have to split up. You know their presentation into six different people and like present it that way when when we're giving the developer time give the people that are uh opposing this project as well time uh you know to to make the argument um if we're going to hear all the arguments then 
let's hear all the arguments. So, well, uh, what are you talking about now? The presentation, or are you speaking about the public hearing? Because the presentation is what what you know people are going to listen to, and they're going to specifically ask questions. I think that when you're talking specifically about the public hearing, you know, then people are going to come up with a whole lot of opposition as to why you know either you're for or you're against. And the presentation right. should be. Um, it should be where the person makes tells us what's going on. And that's what I really want to hear. Right. What I'm saying is if we're going to give 10, 15, however many minutes to a developer to make their case, then community members shouldn't be relegated to a two minute, uh, you know, two minute time frame to make their case. If there's a group of people that want to make their case collectively, then we should have let them the time to do that as opposed to like, you know, the little, the piecemeal things, like it's a, it, it, it works ultimately, but like there's like the people that are here, the people that have been engaged in the process, like I feel like, like I said, these things come up later, like when, you know, when you litigate a case later on, uh, they go in and they look at the, the public comments and, you know, there's, there should be a, a, an opportunity to present the entire argument. I, that, I imagine that would include even people on the committee um, that would be making that argument. Um, that, that's, that we, not, you know, that's not why I really wanted the presentation. I wanted the presentation so that the people from the community could ask questions. Because I, no, I, I, get, I, I hear what you're saying, but my, yeah, point, just, my point is that I feel that the people from the community should also be able to ask them specific questions. I agree, I agree. And, and I think, the, I think there's, a, there's a way to make all of that work out. Uh, you know, but I think, again, we have a limited number of these. If we're gonna be giving time and ultimately, taking time away, you know, whether it's a two minutes or three minutes or whatever from community members, we have very limited number of times that we get to actually weigh in on this project. And so well, I, don't want, yeah, I, don't, you know, I don't want I don't want like an opposition between this and that. All I all I all I'm asking from the committee at this point is to hear what is being said. And then the community people, they have a number of questions. And I believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, at the public hearing is where you normally get your opposition from people there for or against or whatever yeah well yeah and of course uh, but that's where the, the argument kind of sways back and forth but is there is here's a, well, here's a question um it, does the public hearing require that there be mm -hmm. a presentation does it require is that, what is that somehow uh does it require that there be a presentation or is that just something that that we would be doing um you know as a either as a courtesy or just, you know, so we can hear from the developer, because we've obviously tried to hear from this developer. I guess what I'm saying is like, we've, we've tried to do it in many unofficial ways. So if we're going to be giving them actual time out of the official public hearing, like that's, you know, that, that to me is, is, uh, it prejudices the, uh, the committee and the, uh, you know, the community by, by making it seem like this is a, you know, that, that, that's the, uh, the, the official, the official stance when I don't think that's actually no true. this is what I this is what I and I'm presenting it to the committee. This is what I'm proposing. I you know I found it's, you know the cat it's, yeah. it's boring. Um I think we should refocus on your what you're proposing and the committee should vote on it, acknowledging what Esteban is saying. But in the interim, considering we have 60 days, we need a appropriate timeline and you've provided that. So I make a motion to accept for the committee members the timeline proposed by the chair. Well, I, I want to I want to just have because someone else might uh, in, on the committee. What I'm what I'm saying I want to just clear clear this up with him. Um, let me just tell you why I wanted to have it at a time where uh, there was nothing else but this to be so that everybody would have. A There's a motion on the floor. You can't. You have to accept the motion. And ask for a second. Uh, the, can I ask a question just about the format, please? Uh, not uh, right now. Right well, now, we have excuse me, excuse me, Warren, no, excuse me, Warren, excuse, Alicia, excuse let Warren. us do your business, and then we'll ask excuse, you. Your ex excuse me, Warren. No. What, Mia, could you please excuse me? Could you excuse please me. mute her for Robert rules of order violations? Why is Warren taking over the chairwoman's? Uh, I just put a motion on the floor. 
Let's talk about that. There is a process. There is a time frame. The process is right now. About the time frame. I have nothing to say. All I can tell you is that Mara, if you're you're not the meeting, okay, well, 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 Alicia well, had well, her hand up before you made a motion. She had her hand up before you made a motion. Being a part so of the committee. Was she recognized? She's in the committee, not you. So what? She had her hand up before you made a motion. And she Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, the chair would like to speak. Could everyone just mute themselves, please? Thank you. Okay, uh, Warren, um, I, I heard what you're saying, and I know you want to put a motion on the floor. I was just having a discussion around the issue before I put the motion on the floor. I wanted to hear what people were saying. That's it. Now, Warren, I, I, I want to hear you. I wanted to hear what, what, what was being said before I put the motion on the floor. That's all. Ms. Moses, you have Ms. Boyd with her hand up and then Tara with her hand up with questions. Okay. One of, one of the questions is if you're going to ask the developer to come to the meeting, you know, they tend to come and then we ask them questions and they never have the information that we want. They always say, oh, really? I don't have that. I'll get back to you. Oh, I don't have that. So one of the things we would like, if you don't mind, is we have a list of questions beforehand that we can submit. So the developer can't say that they didn't know that we were going to ask these questions so that they, for example, how many bedrooms are you going to have for the affordable categories? You know, where are the affordable categories going to be located? You know, do you have the declaration page and what is in the declaration page? So we can have questions beforehand that we submit to the developer. So they can't say they didn't know or they, oh, I don't know, I'll get back to you. I don't know, I'll get back to you. So is that possible that you can get questions from the community? Of course. Mm -hmm a prior and then submit it to them so that when they do come to the hearing, they're prepared. That's and can, thank you. So I, that's what I'm asking. Thank you. Well, will those questions have um, names behind them or will it just be questions up there? I mean, I, I could submit questions, but I would assume that you would ask the community to submit questions. I, that's what I'm saying. Will it, will it, will it have names like your name, somebody else's name? These I mean, questions. if if somebody wants to put their name on a question, that's fine. But if they don't, they that's don't, okay that's too. I, I don't think okay. that it's, it's a matter of the names. It's a matter of making sure that they have the questions in advance so that the, when they come to our community board, they are prepared. And so we know that if we've asked them a question and they haven't come prepared, it's not because they didn't know, it's because they're refusing to give us the information. I got it. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank um, you. Who's next? Ms. Bond? Thank you, Madam Chair. My concern, like yours, is the time frame. It's a very sensitive time frame. This is one of the biggest issues that will ever happen in our community. Having said that, last time and many times we've requested this essential information, the, I believe, what, restrictive uh, declaration with all the details, how many apartments, how many bedrooms, what is the square foot. So before the presentation, I would think that we insist that we have that detailed information before the presentation. I would like to also, if there's any city plant, any city people here that will speak to certainly the virtual, me like Nicola, my seniors in my uh, um, block association or in my area are very concerned and they don't have computers. They're not computer savvy and it's a real strain on them. So two, one, could we tonight say, let us secure if there's a person from city planning that could speak to these details. We simply asking how many apartments, what's the affordability, what's the square footage, is it a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and how are we going to handle the virtual aspect to uh, um, uh, um, compensate for uh, and include our seniors? And if there's anyone from city planning, could they speak to it? Before right. the presentation, thank uh, you. Uh, right now, I'm I'm just working on the presentation from the um person at the persons at this point. But um, before the presentation, could we could we get them to give us the information, secure that information? Because how are we going to ask the question if we don't have the details? 
Uh, Madam Chair, could you repeat your timeline? Um, I got March 18th and March 23rd, but there was one before that. Uh, right now, of the presentation day, and again, I haven't confirmed anything. I wanted to do the, have them do the presentation on February the 24th. Okay. At 7 p.m. Now, what I can ask them for also is that it has to be some kind of way I think the materials can be fed through, I'm assuming our, our um, community board office where, you know, it, when, you, when they're speaking, it could actually show up so you could actually see what it is that they're speaking about. I think we could probably work that out. Am I correct, Mayor? Oh, definitely. Right. So. I can try and get as much material, you know, as possible. Okay, so now we, before we put the motion on the floor, I think we need to call the roll. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Nolan? Is this just for general attendance or in terms of the motion well, it's going to be, a, I mean, I can see everybody. What's that? Sorry. I... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we need to take attendance so that um, when the, when Warren put the motion on the floor, we, we, we have a quorum so we can vote on it. Okay. Okay. All right. I will call the roll. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fred Baptiste. I don't know if he's still here. Present. Okay, Present. Great. Uh, Warren Burke. Warren, you here? He was here before. I'll come back to him. Uh, is Aaron Brown here? Uh, Suki Chong. Here. Nicola Cox. Here. John Craver. Here. Uh, Esteban Huron. Here. Uh, Nolan Levinson, I'm here. Uh, Patricia Moses. Here. Uh, Thomas Thomas. Here. And Richard Villabrea Jr. Richard here? No. And I'll do another call for Warren. Is he still here or did we lose him? No. I don't see him. I don't see him. Okay, so I. So we have, we have uh, eight members present. We have eight. Man, I don't know what happened with Warren. So uh, we have quorum. Huh? We have a quorum. Okay, great. So I need someone to put the motion on the floor and we can vote on it. That's for the presentation um, tentatively, because I didn't get a confirmation yet, for Wednesday, um, February 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Hello, can I get a motion there? So moved. So the all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any Madam opposed? Chair, point of order. There wasn't yeah. a second on the, on the motion. Oh, there was no second? I didn't hear a second. Could you, could you advise what the second was? They're mu muted now. Can, can second? Is it possible to make an amendment on the motion? Yes. Yes. I would like to. I would like to amend the motion to include uh, Alicia Boyd's request for information. Uh, no request for questions uh, submitted by the community to be answered during the presentation, um, as 
as uh, yeah. Prior to the presentation? Oh, yes. during the presentation. Uh, no, prior Second. to the presentation. Wait a minute, let, let's get this motion together now. I'm all confused now. Okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> How about we say that um, we could pick a date, maybe like the 22nd, which is a Monday, uh, to have questions submitted by noon on Monday, the 22nd. Um, and those questions will be forwarded to the developer to uh, to include in their presentation. But what's the motion? The mo this is an amendment, amendment on the motion. Amendment on the motion, okay. That the question be submitted on the 22nd where to where? Um, um, they can submit them to the BK09 email. Okay. And we'll compile them. Right. And so the um, they will be able to have those questions before the 24th. Is that enough time? It should be. I mean, like most of if they don't have if they don't have answers to those questions uh, even on the spot, I would be I'd be very concerned. Um, but I think these are you know these will be some specific questions that we haven't been able to to figure out on our own through our own you know, our own processes here. So uh, and I think also as part of that, like like. Uh, Ms. Barnes said, I think that the questions could include requests, but for specific documents to be uh, to be included in that too. Like, I think that can all be part of that. Um, so let's get the, can you read back the motion? Because I'm now I'm all confused. Nola? Well, I believe Fred has his hand up. Okay. Not from before. Right. Uh, actually, I was going to, to, to recommend, I mean, this is something perhaps only because we want to make sure that they have adequate time to, one, respond to them, and two, I'm assuming they're going to present, uh, create a deck or something like that. So okay. maybe even if we did it, if that's a Monday, perhaps even if we did it the Friday before, but at okay. least it gives two or three days where they have the questions mm -hmm. that they can properly prepare a deck for the actual presentation. Yeah, that's, that's good. That would be the 19th. The 19th. 19th. <clears throat> okay. Question: Are we giving Mia enough time to court to compile everything and get a document out to the developer? I can help uh, Mia if you'd like me to to touch base with you on that Friday after they've submitted, and we can put it together. Then, um, oh, that'd be perfect. Little, Thank you, Esteban. Yeah, that'll take a little pressure off of you, and we can. Yeah, we'll get it out to them by the end of the day. That. All right, thank you. Can we try this motion again? Because we got an amendment now to the. <laughs> so the, the motion is to have a presentation from the developer on the 24th. And uh, all community members can submit comments that they'd like to the developer to answer to. Uh, to the community board by February 19th. Okay. So, did we second that motion? Did we? Um, I'll second it. Okay, great. You're seconding. Let's move on. Um, what was next? So we need to vote on it, or we need to vote on it. <laughs> oh, we need to vote on it. I thought we voted. We need to vote on it. Okay, go ahead, Nolan. Okay. Y'all gotta go out now. All right, uh, Fred, do you vote on these or no? I don't. Okay. We just we could just um. Or do you want to do a, a, a unanimous consent? Yeah. So I guess all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any no's? Any opposed? Okay. Uh, not tentatively, um, I have the public hearing date for um, Thursday, March the 18th at uh, 7 p.m. Again, that's tentatively. So should we vote on that, um, Fred, or can we just tentatively put it just right now as that day? Because I haven't gotten any confirmation on anything. Should we put it in uh, a <laughs> motion or no? Do, do, you, do you have another ULERP prior to that? 
Um, it's, uh, yeah, in the early part of March, but I was going to okay. table that because I think we need, it would have been March the 9th. But I think that we need to get all of this, at least get it started. Well, and I, I mean, if you want, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. My, my suggestion is if you want, you can leave a placeholder with the office for the date and just see how things play out because I think you'll be able to have a couple of other meetings. Uh, you'll probably also have the, the it sounds like you're going to have the, uh, the presentation by that time. So right. you'll be able to kind of judge what dates you need or if there's any other activities you need. So I think you have a little bit of time. But if you just let me know that you want to hold that date, you can at least do that on the calendar. Check I want to tentatively hold um, March 18th. I didn't want it to be and I know people have other concerns. And I understand what you're talking about in terms of the community not being able to come online. But my my but if we don't plan and then we kind of get pushed into April and then there's a lot of holidays, it's Easter and all that coming up right at the beginning. So <clears throat> and then also this is a lot of information to digest. And even someone in the chat mentioned that we may need to have more than one hearing because I, I've been involved in this and I, I have a hard time understanding everything that's about to hit us, much less someone that's been completely absent from these, these discussions. I think it's gonna take the public time to really digest this okay. and this, come with their concerns. This is why, this is why um, I wanted to do the presentation. That will give people mm -hmm almost a month, you know, to kind of digest it and, you know, have other questions that they want to ask about mm -hmm. at the public hearing. That's why I wanted to do it in advance. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is going to okay. work out, but that's what I would like to do. And then on the 23rd, we can still hold that. No, your board members on, your board meeting is on the 23rd, am I correct, uh, Fred? Correct. Okay, so I wanted to do um, at your full board meeting on, on March the 23rd, I wanted, I would have hoped that the full board could take a vote, whether they're for or against on the 23rd. Those are just tentative dates that I'm putting out there to plan ahead. No, it makes sense. Uh, if I could, hmm? I was going to say, if I could offer this as well, because you do have another ULERT meeting coming in as well, yeah. uh, which will come after that meeting, you can actually dedicate some of that time if you wanted to have additional questions or you know, either the whole session you can dedicate to that or a portion okay. of the session in terms of follow-up questions. So you uh -huh. do have that already built into the schedule if you wanted to do some additional stuff. And I just offer that to the, to the, to the committee as an option. Okay, you're talking about oh my. You talking about my next meeting would be on March 9th. That's that's that would have been my next meeting, and then right. um, public hearing would be on March the 18th. If correct, that's the goal. if that schedule holds up, and, and you can always play with the 18th if you needed to. Okay, but, but you always have at least on March 9th. If you know that, if you know, depending on what kind of um, feedback you get from the the, the first presentation, you okay. can kind of coordinate your schedule to see how that works. Okay, great. Um, and that's all I have. If, if you, I know you have to leave, uh, Fred. Um, so is there anything that you would like to just say before you leave or? Uh, no, I mean, I just wanna say that, uh, listen, I, I, what I wanted to say, thank you to the chair and thank you to the committee because uh, you put in a lot of hours of work and, 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 and research prior to this. Um, and I think this is going to pay off in terms of we're going to have the kind of public process that this community deserves to have. We should have certain conversations. There are a lot of questions that, that need to be asked and answered. Uh, and this is going to put us in a position as a board where we can make an informed decision. I think at the end of the day, that's what we really want to make sure we do. Um, if anybody needs to, so I'll definitely be speaking with the chair, along with the other chairs. A number of other committees will also be working. So if you check the community board uh, calendar, um, the dates for those meetings should also be available. So you, you know, if you have a particular interest or a particular section uh, that you would like to look into, whether it be housing, whether it be specifically about BVG, or whether it be about environmental protection and impacts, um, those committees will be meeting as well. So most likely be covered on their agendas. So you'll have an opportunity to weigh in on those occasions as well. And, and, and along those lines, uh, the other committees are also working. So we do have a number of other hours built-in slots that we can actually talk about a number of these items. Uh, but 
but otherwise, again, I just want to thank everyone um, for, for your time and, you know, to have some good constructive conversations about this and we're going to come to a decision as a board. Okay, um, let's see. Professor Ngotti's on the line. Now. Okay, well, let's hold on a second. Mm -hmm. I'll just finish this, just wrap this up. I have, uh, I think I have one, I have one question and that's to you, Alicia, since you talked about the community, what would they be doing? Would they be sending in their, I mean, how would they get the information into the community board um, or what would they be doing? Well, I would hope that the community board and I would ask Ms. Hilton to send out a mass email to the community stating that the, that the developers are coming to on the 24th, and if you have any questions that you want specifically asked of them, please submit them by this date to Got the community it. board. So it could be forwarded to uh, uh, Ms. Hilton and then to them. And of course, you know, we'll do our own outreach. Okay. <laughs> and we'll also be asking the same thing. So that way, at least there'll be some community outreach and so is that possible, Ms. Hilton? I see Ms. Hilton. I see you on the phone, Ms. Hilton. <laughs> yeah, I was just doing a little troubleshooting behind the scene. Just give me one moment. Okay. So I would assume that Ms. Hilton will be able to send out a mass email. And I would hope that it would be in the subject line because a lot of people don't pay attention to the, the emails that come every Friday. So if there could be a separate email, like pose questions for the 960 Franklin Avenue rezoning and then inform the community that the hearing. And I hope that you also would send out an email to the community, letting the community know that they are coming, that the hearing, it, that they all will be coming. Well, I have to, to yeah, well, I, I'll have to get, I'll have to get in, uh, in touch with Mia because I have to confirm it and I'll, hopefully I'll- well, Mia's to, right here. Mia, Mia, is that possible? Yeah, I will work with her to confirm Yeah, it. I'm, 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 and I'm thinking maybe if I created a Google questionnaire, Google form, to kind of streamline the process and um, kind of organize the responses in, in the body of that email. I think that would just be more efficient for everyone. Okay. So it would make it easier to compile the questions if yeah. you did that. Um, yeah. Um, but in case some people are not that Google savvy, like mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just could you make sure that this is the option to submit it? In yeah, and, and I'll put that in the body in the email as well. If they're unable to complete it in that format, they can simply um, send an email to BK09 with their, their the question that they would like posed to the developer. And and could we do this as soon as possible? That way you give people enough time because we don't, we have such a short time now. So me, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out tomorrow to the developer. Yeah. And then I will get right on it, you know, um, I met Miss uh, Miss Hilton sending out the notice, just letting everybody know that this hearing is going to happen and questions are being asked. You mean the presentation? Yeah, the presentation. Right. I'm sorry. The presentation. Yeah. So, right. right. She's gonna. I have to confirm it, and then as soon as I, okay. I will definitely try to get the information to her as soon as I can. Hopefully tomorrow, if I get a yay or a nay. Okay. And if the right. day, as soon as I get the confirmation, then you know I'll start prepping yeah, the form right. so that I can go out. Okay. Great. And then just one other thing, Ms. Hilton, I was just asking that it be in the in the subject matter. So oh, I did 960 Franklin. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. And I, I saw Mr. Benefi on from BBG. So uh, I'm assuming that they can also leverage their fight for sunlight to help spread the word and collect questions from their membership as well. Once we get the, the confirmation on the presentation. Yeah, well, they're part of the community. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I thought well, I saw Richard someplace in the morning. He put his thumbs up, so I assume that means yes. <laughs> we can't <laughs> audibly hear you, <laughs> Mr. Benny P, but we assume the thumbs means yes. <laughs> that's a, that's, that would be a yes. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, I, yeah. I thumbs, but okay. Great. Um. Okay, so we can move on. Um, I'm sorry, you said we have a guest speaker here, right? Is he here? Yes, Professor Angadi is here. Okay. Hmm. Can, I, can I introduce him, is that okay? Yes, go ahead and introduce him. Make it quick too. 
Well, um, as you guys know, there is a, a um, Corey Johnson is creating a bill. He has a bill on the floor to do what he calls a comprehensive plan that will include every community board in New York City where they would have to create, where the mayor's office will be creating a plan for the community boards for increased development. And there's a lot of parameters around it and there's a lot of discussion, but this bill is supposed to be in front of the city council as the current council people are leaving and um, as the mayor is leaving. So there's a lot of controversy about it and there's a lot of discussion about it. Um, the city is going around to various community boards and doing their presentations. However, we here in our community, we tend to stay up on top of things. So we have a, a, a little foot ahead of the game. And so we asked Professor Rangadi who did an op-ed ad in city limits in January on the bill. For people who may not know Professor Rangadi, he's a well-known um, professor of Hunter College, a former, well, a doctor, PhD, but he could give you more of his credentials, but we all know him and love him in this community because he has been essential in educating us and letting us know about the EULA process and, and you know, rezoning and development. And he's really an expert on comprehensive planning. He's really pushed for comprehensive planning um, through, and has tried for the last third, three decades, four decades, I think, and trying to get comprehensive planning into the community, um, but there's some problems with the bill. <laughs> and so I wanna introduce you to Professor Mangadi, a very much well-loved and known person in our community. Thank you for coming, Professor. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alicia, for that wonderful introduction. Um, how much time do I have, about 10 minutes or so? Five, 10 minutes? You got, you got at least 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I uh, have worked a long time for decades as an advocate for comprehensive planning. And um, I worked for the city planning department. I, ta I, I taught um, urban planning at Hunter College, Columbia, Pratt, everywhere in the world. Um, and I understand the value. What is comprehensive planning? It means looking at the whole, looking at the city as a whole, not just today, but five years from now, 10 years from now, what do we wanna be? What do we wanna have? What do we need as a city? New York City is the only major city in the United States that has never had a comprehensive answer to that question a long-term look at where is the city going? What are our capital needs? What are our service needs? What are the inequalities within the city that have to be rectified as new development occurs, as problems arise and so forth? So I test, I've testified um, at many um, public hearings uh, before the city council, uh, the in the mayor's charter revision hearings for comprehensive planning. But I added something to it, which I think is an essential um, companion to the proposal. It's called community planning. So comprehensive planning takes a look from the top and a look at the whole but we are a city of 8 million people, five boroughs, um, 59 community districts, 59 community boards. And each one has their unique characteristics, problems, issues, needs. And one size does not fit all. Uh, and so community-based planning has been, for me, an essential part of the whole process. That's what's missing in the city council's proposal. It's all top down, it's, there's no bottom up. The uh, citywide planners will come up with a set of three alternative growth strategies. Oh. That's the other problem I have with this. It's all focused on where to put growth. Now, I'm not against growth, 
growth is, is fine, but what do you mean by growth? And uh, where is the growth going to occur? How is it going to occur? Well, the city planners who put this together said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna come up with a strategy that allocates growth to every community board. Now, in principle, what's wrong with each community board having its own strategy for growth? But as you all know, as I, as I know in my neighborhood, it's not only growth that we care about, it's preservation that we care about. It's the schools that we care about. It's traffic. It's everything that, that is, a, is part of the quality of our life everything that meets our needs or addresses our needs. So to only have a strategy that is focused on growth is not good enough. And to only have a, a strategy that's put together at the citywide level by a, the Office of Long-Term Planning, which is under the mayor's office. And the mayor's office needs to have its strategies, but we have 59 community boards and each community board needs to have their, let me just fit, let me just sort of finish with the, uh, another really important part of the story for context. Community boards were created because there was no voice for communities in city planning decisions. 1977, the Uniform Land Use Review Procedure, ULERP, was created. It didn't come out of the blue. It followed the civil rights movement, the demands by neighborhoods to have a voice in decision making. And in 1989, the city charter was again revised because many communities set out to do their own plans. Community-based planning didn't just start uh, yesterday. It, it began over 50 years ago and it started at the grassroots. It started in the environmental justice movements. It started in, uh, in, in many community boards too, who decided they were gonna go out and develop a strategy for for their own communities because the city wasn't doing it and the, or the city was doing something they weren't satisfied with. So community-based planning has also come up from the grassroots and it, it's needed because it fills a gap. We have a very large city, 8 million people, 59 community districts, very complex uh, agencies that are all under the mayor. Uh, we have a very strong mayor system. So um, we also need the balance. We need to have some balance in power. And I have been, as, as long as I've advocated comprehensive planning, I've been an advocate that community boards have staff and have a planner on their staffs um, and by the way, that was in the 1989 charter revision. Every community board should have a planner. But you know what the mayors have done is they've skirted that whole thing by saying, well, you can go to the city planning department and you'll find city planners and they'll answer any questions for you. That's not good enough. Every community board needs to have a planner. Every community board needs to be able to do its own plan. Does it have to be, does it, does it need to be a plan that's entirely independent of the city's plan? Absolutely not. There needs to be planning at multiple levels, at the community board level and at the citywide level. How do you get the two to work together? You don't do it by uh, having a comprehensive plan that starts at the top and in which community boards don't have a definitive, incisive role in uh, preparing that plan, modifying that plan, and making sure 
that it meets their needs. Is it gonna be easy? Absolutely not. But you know why the city council wants to do it this way? Because that's the easy way. That way, you start at the top, they come up with their plan, and then you stuff it down the throats of 59 community boards. And that's gonna leave us right back to where we are today. An imbalanced system with not enough, um, and, and I guess I would just end with, with uh, something I, I sort of hinted at before, that this is an equal rights question. It's a civil rights question. Um, just as the demand for community control of schools was a central demand uh, of the 1970s, so was community boards. Community boards for all community districts throughout the city and not just the boards who could afford to um, uh, pay for studies and, uh, and pay for a planner. So that's, that's where my criticism comes from. And I have had to, I, I have talked to my friends and former students who have been working on this proposal um, because I, I think it's so important that the city get this right. But to do it the fast and easy way and pass a bill that leaves out one of the most important elements in doing planning, I, I don't think is, is right. Uh, so there's time to change it. There's time to get out and to make noise and, um, and to demand changes in the proposal. Uh, I don't, I am not in favor of just dropping the whole idea of comprehensive planning, but I am in favor of dropping it if it doesn't include community planning. Uh, <clears throat> if you have some questions, I guess we need to, like, I can't see all the hands, so I guess I need to go in the chat, if you okay. can. You want me to? Mia, you can help us out with the chat, but meanwhile. Yes, I got you. Okay, so if you could just put your questions uh, in the chat. Ms. Barnes, I don't uh, think she's do not you want, in the chat. Do you want to just go through the questions? questions? Hmm? You want me to just go through the questions one by one? Yeah, the, the, some the community just want to ask a question. I'm gonna let Miss Bonds go first, but I don't think she goes into the chat. Or do you, Miss Bonds? But go ahead. No, I'm a senior, and my oh. eyes are going. I can, I don't I. <laughs> I know. What you I don't mean. need to go into the chat. Thank you, Madam Chair, Professor. This uh, master plan that was authored, it seems, by uh, Corey Johnson. These three plans that, well, first of all, they, from what I understand, they're going to eliminate the community totally. One public hearing for the community, and now they even want to eliminate the community board. So to, to stick to my question, that is, what are these three plans that they have? Who authored them? And could you, in a, in, in a summarize, these three plans that if no one picks one of these three plans, then the mayor gets to author the plan? My understanding is there are three alternatives. Right. Uh, they're to present three alternatives. And they focus about on growth because they, they, they imply, but they explicitly say, one is a, um, an alternative, with a high growth rate, one with a low growth rate, and uh, and something in the middle. And I interpret that as a trick. That's a trick, you know. Uh, so you present people with two extremes. The logical path, the mind goes right to the middle. Of course, compromise. But what if the big question isn't growth? What if it isn't all that simple? What if your 
three plans are the wrong three alternatives? What if you exaggerated one of them and you underplayed the other? What if you didn't present them in an honest and direct uh, way so that people could make up their minds independently? So that's why I say it could be a trick. I know I've, I've, I've taught uh, planning students for a long time and, and the first thing they do if, when, when they're doing their studio um, projects and everything is they try to trick you <laughs> and they try to, they present, uh, all, they do the same thing, you know, three alternatives, uh, but the middle one seems like the compromise, therefore that's, that's the best one. No, not good enough. Okay, thank you. Uh, who's next? Mm. Does anybody else in the chat? Yeah, it, I'm just trying to scroll up because a few came in very fast. Okay. Okay. Um, for Miss, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna go um, in order that I'm reading up. Um, um, how would you present an argument against the city council proposal? What would be a good strategy that would be a powerful resistance to the council? Is there a good chance we can delay this until November elections when everyone is term limited? Mm. Now, whose question is that? Uh, I believe that's coming from Ms. Pinkerton. Okay. Well, I, um, I, I think delaying the decision would be a good one. This is such an important thing let's give it time for a, a deep discussion. Let's have the, the mayoral candidates, let's have the city council candidates uh, express their views on how to do this. Uh, let's not rush it through, but let's not drop it. Okay. Got it. I have a question in the chat from Nicola. Um, what specific asks would you recommend for the community engagement in developing this plan. Um, I am suspect of the community developing a plan that then sits on the shelf while DCP then implements the plan they already developed. Mm. Hold on. That they've already developed for the community. Well, as some of you know, I wrote the book on community-based planning. Um, uh, and in 1979, when the in 1989, when the city charter was changed, that explicitly gave community boards the ability to do their own plans. And they're called 197A plans for section 197A of the city charter. Uh, and um, I was among a small group of professional planners that worked with community boards to do their own plans and to do the first generation of officially approved 197A plans. The problem is nobody does them anymore for a very good reason. Um, the city planning department files them away and says they're just plans. And, um, and so that gives you kind of a sense if the city planning department institutionally is behind this comprehensive plan uh, um, reform, what their concept of planning is, top down, not bottom up. And um, yeah, so, so that's, um, th that's the problem. That's the problem. Got it. Um, next question per, uh, posed by uh, Jamish Raphael. What have you seen in the fight between community voices demanding preservation and developers? Are many demands for preservation successful? Well, there's a, that's a long story because uh, preservation of what and uh, for who? And is it just preservation of buildings? Or what about preservation of people's cultures and um, public, public spaces? Uh, and so forth. And unfortunately, preservation is defined officially through the Landmarks Preservation Commission, which does tend to be historically on the side of building preservation. Uh, and 
uh, rarely take a look at districts, although there are many uh, preservation districts. Um, but I'm among a small group of professionals that have always advocated, advocated for cultural landmarks. What about the people who didn't have beautiful brocaded buildings uh, in their neighborhoods, but had, you know, famous people li who lived there or people who became famous later. And there's so many wonderful cultural landmarks of uh, churches that, um, that don't have beautiful uh, Gothic spires that qualify uh, for the architect's preservation. Now, the other part of this question is, one of the things the city doesn't want to do is give anybody um, tools that would prevent things that are of value for the city as a whole from occurring in their neighborhood. Uh, call it uh, not in my backyard or uh, people who are exclusionary and so forth. That's one question. But in the interest of fighting exclusionary people who just say, leave me alone, we don't want anything, do you take away their power? Do you take away the power of people in neighborhoods and communities uh, to have a voice, a real voice, a voice that matters? So unfortunately, at the, at the top, of the city planners, they only see it from that vantage point and they don't see it from the vantage point of people in their communities, many of whom have good reasons to keep certain things out because they, uh, they threaten the quality of life. And um, and we all have di different definitions of the quality of life, of course, but that's part of the discussion that we need to have. Okay, we've got to cut a little short because we don't yeah, have time, but there's a couple of more people. Yeah, I have two more in the chat. Uh, a question from Ms. Nichols. Um, if there was a planner on every community board, how would they be found? How, could how would the community know that uh, the planner was not secretly answerable to some other interests? Oh, you'd hire them. <laughs> you'd pay their salaries. Okay. Um, yeah, somebody else. And, and I mean, community boards need to have bigger budgets. They need to have more staff. You realize the, the, av the average community board is the size of, of uh, uh, you know, a municipality in upstate New York that has a budget five times yours. Right, so true. Um, I have a question um, in the chat from Ms. Boyd, and I guess a statement and or a question. Communities and residents all over New York are complaining, expressing concerns about climate change, water pollution, sea level rising, air pollution, reducing energy use and wasting um, energy use and waste, protecting public green space, et cetera. In your opinion, hold on. In your opinion, Paige, hey, hey. yeah. you actually mentioned that comprehensive planning can actually undo and replace antiquated and unsustainable environmental policies that could address these concerns. Uh, does this bill do that? And if not, what changes can be done so uh, could be done that it would. The, the bill uh, would create the possibility of addressing, you know, questions of resilience, environment, environmental justice, but not explicitly by itself. Um, it's not enough. And one of the checks on it is, <clears throat> is greater uh, participation by not only community boards, but um, civic organizations, activist groups, environmental groups uh, to weigh in on, on these uh, 
big resource questions <clears throat> and environmental questions and, um, and social justice questions as well. And, and that's why the other part of my alternative is this planning has to be an ongoing process, not a once every 10 years. You should be doing planning all the time at the citywide level and at the community level. It should be an ongoing process and there should be a dialogue going on uh, at every step of the way. <clears throat> the, the city in the United States that's, that uh, did this uh, most thoroughly and first was Seattle. And that's what they did. They, they had concurrent plans going on at the community level and at the citywide level. Gotcha. I just have, um, Chair, we have uh, about two or three more questions in the chat. Do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to it, but uh, somebody has a hand raised. Is that Tom with his hand raised? Yep. Huh? Oh, Tom. Um, hi, yeah, Mr. Yeah, he, Tom. I don't think he could do chat, so I want to let him go in there. Ms. Boyd, is your hand back up, or that was from earlier? Back up. Okay, got it. Uh, Thank I you. I other people, because as because I'm going to, you know, at 8.30, I'm done. <laughs> go ahead. Tom? Hi. So uh, my resume is pretty much the same as Tom's. And I've reached the same conclusions and come up against my students frequently in the past. Uh, I, I'd just like to comment on the uh, pig and the poke aspect of this. Uh, taking three alternative plans from a central agency and picking one is not a good idea. Um, but there is also the issue of what comprehensive plan means and what piece of it do you want? I think it, we as a community board uh, should not give away land use decisions and the nebulous thing called character of the neighborhood. You, know, you don't wanna be picking a plan that somebody else decides. On the other hand, we, we have pretty much no interest in uh, water and sewer master planning, uh, little interest in transit planning, but the essence of what's important to us is, uh, is what happens with our zoning, what happens with the character of the neighborhood, the notion of a 40 story tower and el eliminating the utility of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden is, is within our uh, purview, I think. So uh, there are some parts of comprehensive planning that, uh, okay, you do it. But there are other parts of comprehensive planning that we need to generate from ourselves and not select from somebody else's menu. Okay, so that's a statement. Okay, who's I next? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, was that a statement, right? That was not really a question. Well, the question is, which, which issues do we want to, to carve out for ourselves? Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I mean, there are a lot of things, and this is where a top-heavy city administration really, really can go off the rails. There are a lot of things that you know about your neighborhood that I don't. And and that I know about my neighborhood that you know, okay? Let's, let's start with that understanding. And, and there are also a lot of things, and there are differences within our neighborhoods, but there are also differences within government, by the way. So, yeah. Okay, okay. you said we have two more questions? Yeah, it's a few at this point. Um, the next up is a question from Debbie Stoller. Um, it says this plan was announced on the exact same day that many community groups held a protest in front of City Hall against rezoning um, the way that they are done, rezonings the way they are done now. Uh, communities are stating, hold on, oh no, my scroll, hold on. Sorry about that, hold on guys. Eek. 
So, well, excuse me, against rezonings the way they are done now, communities are starting to have some success. Do you think that this specifically, hold on. Oh my God, I'm sorry. This is like scrolling, super scrolling. Would it be would it be easier if this was specifically designed to push community I, yeah, resistance I got it now. out of the you, way? Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Professor Gotti, did you get the last piece of that? No, I didn't. Okay, hold on one second. Do you think that this was specifically designed to push community resistance out of the way and roll out the red carpet for wealthy developers? Oh, okay. Also, do you think this is really going to pass, referencing the, the bill? Well, yeah, that's a, a good question because you have to put it in context. Uh, a couple of things have happened. There's been the constant push demanding that the city do more long-term planning. Um, you know, <laughs> um, our uh, Hurricane Katrina, <clears throat> Sandy, um, uh, uh, woke up a lot of developers as well as neighborhood folks uh, because uh, large portions of our city, significant portions of our city are going to are being subject to flooding, and as sea level rise rises, we don't have a plan. Uh, we don't have a plan uh, how to do uh, deal with this. So you have the long term planning beginning to take place, uh, <clears throat> but uh, now I lost the train of my thought. What was the question again? Uh, do you think the bill is actually going to pass? And do you think oh. the announcement of it was meant oh. to um, crush uh, community? Okay, so so yeah, from the top, there's this need to do some bigger master planning, <clears throat> long-term planning. There's a recognition. They're doing it very slowly, sluggishly. A, a lot of elected officials aren't taking it seriously. Um, some of the agencies aren't taking it seriously, but um, there's been a total emphasis forever on zoning as a substitute for planning. <clears throat> it's in the Department of City Planning, so you would expect that they, they would uh, <clears throat> first do the planning and then do the zoning. No, all they do is zoning. And zoning, uh, for them is making changes in the zoning ordinance. Why? Because there are developers interested. They're buying up land in, in certain areas. They're interested in changing the zoning so that they can build more, make more money. And, <clears throat> uh, and so um, the cries for comprehensive planning come as a uh, a reaction to that narrow zoning approach. But then something else happened. Uh, Bloomberg rezoned 40% of the land in the city. And he rezoned it with <clears throat> the view of developers. They give us all the, the prime land for the big developers. <coughs> Excuse me. And people want to preserve their single family homes, we'll, we'll give them those areas. We'll, we won't touch some, some of those areas. We want, we want the valuable land. And that was the theory behind the Bloomberg rezoning. So they upzoned in order to create development along major corridors um, in strategic locations. And then they downzoned to protect areas that big developers weren't really interested in. Okay, de Blasio comes into office and he says, well, <clears throat> um, the uh, Bloomberg administration emphasized big real estate, mostly in uh, neighborhoods that were already valuable, um, uh, mostly in white neighborhoods. So we're gonna start rezoning in areas that have been neglected 
as if this was something that people were really demanding. Anyway, I'm going to do 15 rezonings as of today <clears throat> in the second term. He only got six. Why every one of them was fought tooth and nail. And most of them in communities of color. Most of them low income communities. And most of them were targeted by <clears throat> uh, speculators and developers. So he took a beating and, um, and he, he's tried to sell those rezonings as a way to get affordable housing and passed MIH, mandatory inclusionary housing, so that when zoning gets changed, you, the developer, now has to provide uh, 20 to 30 percent affordable housing, <clears throat> so called affordable housing. We're going to have to cut it. We're going to have to okay. can you wrap that up for me. So, yeah. And then the final chapter of the story is uh, seeing the failure of that those that rezoning program the new call is to rezone in white wealthy areas to prove that they can put affordable housing not just in communities of color low income communities but in the neighborhoods that have resisted them forever and uh, <laughs> that's where we are now uh, Gowanus, uh, which includes part of Park Slope, um, and uh, Soho. Uh, no, uh, yeah, the Soho rezoning are both being pitched as <clears throat> bringing affordable housing into wealthy neighborhoods, and we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Okay, we're going to have to. I would like to end this meeting. I got like one minute. Um, Ask a question that a motion be placed on the floor. So, because this, uh, some type of motion directing the community board to take a position about this bill, because it makes no sense for us to have Professor Angadi here if we then don't come out with some kind of action plan. And maybe we should ask the city council to delay this bill, the signing of this bill, until more community input, more engagement happens with the community in order to truly formulate a comprehensive plan. Can I ask to be, um, the EULA committee to place a motion? Oh, right now, to be very honest with you right now, I would really like to um, get a, a, you know, a better understanding of this bill because I, you know, we need to review it. Yeah, but Pat, you've all, we, I gave you the information. We, we've talked about this last month. They're trying to pass the bill in April. We don't have a lot of time. We have the EULA process. Come on, guys. We've given you all the information. Now we have the presenter here. I mean, if we don't act, what more do you need? I mean, I mean, it's a top down. You got three bills. It's not that difficult. You got three plans the mayor is going to choose. You have to choose one of the plans. If you don't choose it, OK, the mayor chooses it. <laughs> What happens, is, what happens is even though we, we we vote here, we have to bring it in front of the entire right. board. So let's, not our decision. Right. You know, so let let the entire board. Right. Not so let, let a decision come from the EULA asking the board after having reviewed the bill and having Professor Ngadi do the presentation that we put a motion on the floor that the board send a letter to the elected officials and the mayor and the city council that this bill should not be passed until it has community engagement in its formation. So moved. So I'm well, you guys are board member. You, I'm asking the EULA. Can you? I can't because I'm not a member of the EULA committee. I'm asking one of the members of the committee to place a motion on the floor. So moved. <laughs> oh, we have, we have to place a motion. You have to so place, I the, place motion the motion on the floor. You ready to put it on and Nicola second it. I no, can't. she has to put it on the floor. I can't hear. So I put a motion on the floor to send a letter to our
city council person, Lori Cumbo, and the city council that this bill should not be passed until there's more extensive community engagement incorporated into the bill and a, pro a thorough process for communicating how this master plan would work. Seconded. But this has to be, well, you didn't say it has to be brought forward to the entire board. We cannot, for a vote, we cannot, we cannot say that it should be done. We have to bring it in front of the board for a vote. Okay, so you pass. Okay. So you pass a motion for the community board to send a letter to everyone saying exactly what Nicola said. So, it goes to, goes but if to Nicola already put the motion on the floor, so so another um, member has to amend it to state that the voting should be done at full board. Okay, I'll amend it. Uh, I'll amend Nicola's motion to state that the. Um, that the letter should be sent after a decision from the full board to support the UIP committee's uh, recommendation at their next meeting. Um, I think I'm gonna take a vote because I can't tell who's here and who's not. Unanimous vote? I'm looking. Okay. I think, let me do a roll. Is my, Nicola, want, I mean, do you want me to call it? Yeah, let's just, we're going to do the vote. Yeah, just call the names and we'll vote yay or nay. Hopefully we'll have a form. I'm not sure if we do. Okay, so uh, Warren Burke. Suki Chong. Yes. Nicola Cox. Yes. John Craver. Yes. Esteban Hiron. Yes. Nolan Levinson. Yes. Patricia Moses. Yes. Thomas Thomas. Yes. Okay. So that's. Uh, seven yeses, and that's all of the members who are present right now. So I have a quorum. Yep. Okay. So thank you, thank you, um, Professor. I want to thank you for coming out and spending time with us. Thanks and for inviting me. <laughs> we definitely appreciate it. Yes, we do. And um, it was definitely, a, a, I really have to now follow up a little bit more and read myself as to what this bill is really all about. Because I know that they do, you know, city plans, there's plans every year, but I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. And I think that it's something for us to really think about. And again, I want to thank all the community people. Um, we have a, a, a lot of people here, like about 60 some odd people. And I want to thank you all for coming out. And we're, we're going to get like really busy. There's so many things going on at once. So just bear with us and we're going to definitely try to keep up. And again, I couldn't do it without uh, the community people and our committee members. And Nolan, uh, definitely not without you because you keep some excellent um notes for us and I appreciate it. I want to say good night to everybody and I'll see you at our next wait. Let me just say something. Our next scheduled meeting that for us is supposed to be on March the 9th. Right. But again, if I get a confirmation tomorrow, you know, we will have we're going to be meeting earlier and everybody will know if we can have that uh, presentation on, 20, on the 24th of February. Again, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.